We are delighted, ladies and gentlemen, to introduce to you Mr. Tony LaRussa, Jr. <clears throat> Thank you. Thanks. Good morning. Uh, if I had a title for my remarks, I think the title would be Celebrate Slash Challenge. And I start with a celebration part. Uh, this is a significant day for the graduates. Uh, learned a long time ago to enjoy the moment. You don't have moments like this all that often. Uh, in baseball, just sometimes getting a win is one of those moments. And you start looking ahead too quickly and you miss the opportunity to understand, realize, appreciate what you've experienced. Graduating from college is a major achievement, and it is a time for celebration, uh, especially when you have family and friends who have supported you and made, made it happen. So I encourage you to use good sense, but uh, have a great time. And then you're going to start turning your attention to what's next. Uh, your first decision about your future, and, and now you're in charge to a great degree, is how long you celebrate. Is it just today? Is it the rest of the weekend? You take the Christmas vacation? Uh, you wait till the first of the year? Wait till next year? I will tell you there's an old saying that maybe was true in old days, and that is that uh, you're only as good as your last success. That's no longer true. Nowadays, and it has been true for a while, you're only as good as your next success. And I want you to remember this while you're celebrating. Uh, I would suggest that you take an, a piece of your brain and, and uh, you start planning like tomorrow for what's next. Uh, as I made it clear, it's important to celebrate, enjoy the moment. There are people that you want to celebrate with. But I think the, uh, the point I'd like to stress is what's next. Now, I'm not positive, but I would bet there are no or few guaranteed multi-million dollar salaries that are awaiting any of you graduates. What's awaiting is opportunities, competition for those opportunities, competition within the opportunity. And uh, that's a real next challenge. I'm not sure what you feel when you think about it. Are you a little scared, uneasy? I hope so. There's an old saying in baseball, if, if you get ready for a game and if, you don't, if you're not nervous, you're not ready. It means you don't care. And I would suggest to you the dumbest next step you could make is to think that getting that degree, you're going to carry it forward, and whatever happens, happens, and it's going to be really good, automatically. Baloney. Uh, I don't even think kids use baloney anymore. That's kind of an old. <laughs> I think the point is that uh, what's ahead, you should be uneasy about. And the uneasiness is good, because it means you care, and you understand that there are legitimate challenges. Times may be tougher than others. I mean, we know what the economics are, and you know, you may have a number of people who want to hire you. You may have to struggle to find somebody. I mean, everybody has their own situation. But I have a very encouraging message for you. Success is out there for you. Uh, and our teams over the years are a good example. And everybody's always looking for the easy answer. Uh, the label that seems to fit. I'll give you the easy answer, answer, but you have to understand how deeply it runs. It's called personalization. It's all about you. People have asked, you know, I've managed for 33 years, and the athletes are very talented, sometimes very arrogant, sometimes they're very conflicted because their family and friends or agents are saying, get yours, get yours, and we have a team sport. I tell them all the time, if you want to get yours, you should play golf or tennis. If you choose a team sport, you're part of a team. 
The way to break through all that, whether I'm trying to do my job or they're trying to do theirs, is to personalize. And I think it's a little mysterious. If I don't explain it, I'm not going to take a lot of time to explain it, but I will tell you this. Personally means you personally. And I would encourage you to embrace these challenges and the concept of competition. You need to understand that within you, and this is not corny rhetoric that you read in a book, this is the truth from somebody that's actually watched it happen. There are amazing strengths, resources that you can call on if you decide to personalize what's next. And by that I mean each of us has this ability to decide. Now, what makes you reach for those resources and how do you personalize? There's a real important test, and the word important is it. Just think about anything that you've accomplished to this point. If something is truly important to you, and that's the key, if you're just kind of okay on it, you don't get deep enough. But if it becomes very important to achieve anything, maybe you want to go on a, a workout routine, maybe you want to graduate from college, whatever it is, if it becomes important to you, it's incredible the strengths, the amazing resources that you have within you. And I'll tell you your first test. Just look at your college experience. You know, there's a level of 1 to 10, 1, not good at all, barely eking by, and 10 is your tops. When you reflect on your college experience, honestly, did you get to 10? And I would guess that most people have not. I know I didn't. But if you think about 10 as a standard, you can use what you didn't learn or could have gotten more out of from college for your next challenge. And I think that's uh, the golden key. Uh, I get very upset when people say that competition is not something great. Competition is a wonderful thing. If you embrace it and you, understand, and you compete the right way, it brings out the best in you, and you test yourself against whoever, whatever. And there's a, a pressure that attaches. And if you really do it right, pressure becomes your friend. You saw us do it in the World Series. I'll mention it quickly, but you can make pressure your friend. It starts with preparation. The more times you feel it, the more comfortable you get with it. In the end, when you're doing whatever it is, you just concentrate on the process. You don't get distracted by the results. There's a great quote. Uh, I don't know, hopefully enough of you recognize the name. Dirt Nowinski. Play for the Mavs. Dallas Mavericks, they won the NBA championship. Had a great fourth quarter every time they won a game. True pressure player. Somebody said to him, what's your definition of pressure? How do you feel about pressure? Had one of the greatest answers I've ever heard. He says, I make love to pressure, my man. That's who I am. <laughs> That's embracing pressure. My point is this, and I tell this to our players, every one of you, man, woman, you can be the go-to person in whatever you go to next your firm, your business, whatever it is. If you just accept the pressure as a friend, you embrace it and you try to make yourself special by personalizing, and the personalizing starts with it being important. Uh, I've been through all the scary time. When I first started managing, I was a lousy player with very little managing experience. I asked for some kind of confidence advice and the old pros told me, you rent, you don't buy. Uh, I realized that was true. My first job was Chicago. Lousy player, no credentials. The tag was that the only reason I was there, the owner was too cheap to hire a real manager. I just personalized my way through it. But I will tell you that what's next, I'll give you a, a graphic example. Uh, and I, I wasn't going to mention it. I was wondering about mentioning I wanted to, but I was wondering. But I did get the introduction. There was a lot of baseball in it in 2011. Uh, we made a historic comeback from 10 and a half back in August to qualify as a wild card on the last day. And then we were the underdog three different times, and we won it. And I don't know how many people, but I think I'm learning that a lot of people watch game six of the World Series, maybe the most exciting World Series game of all time. And twice we were within one strike 
of being eliminated and watching Texas celebrate, and we tied it, won it. When the game was over, I'm talking about celebrating. The whole town was, you couldn't go anywhere in St. Louis that night. The next day, you couldn't go anywhere without people talking about game six. You know what we did as a team? We said, it's what's next, which is game seven. And we had this thing where we put game six in a box, not to be thought about again until we won game seven. It's a classic example. You know how we did it? Because our club was very, very personally involved, a lot of character, a lot of toughness. And that's what I suggest. That's my message for each of you. It's in you. You have to challenge yourself to find it. It has to do with importance. And you can do it. Uh, there's no limits to what you can do if it becomes important to you. So I congratulate you. Uh, encourage you to celebrate with your family and friends. And the last thing I'd say to you as you get into your next phase of your life, uh, give something back. Whatever community you're in, whatever cause you believe in, just don't make it a, a, a you by yourself. Give something back. And if anybody challenges this concept, what the manager or the Cardinals, talk, ex-Cardinals, talk about, he said, what are you talking about personally? Well, it sounds kind of egotistical. There's no I in team. There is no I in team, but there's an M and an E for me. Make it about you, and uh, you'll be very, very satisfied with your, uh, with your life and your career. Congratulations. Good luck.